Hello YouTube! I made myself a new toy. So if you are in need of a core winding machine or your weekly dose of depressions, then you can now print one of these out yourself. So without further ado, let me show you some of the key features of it. Okay, now a quick disclaimer. There's one part that needed machining and that is the ECMA screw of the linear axis. Both ends need machining, so they sit properly in the bearings. And you need to figure out another way so the ECMA screw is not loose between those bearings if you have no access to a lathe. But that's about all you need to know before you print it. Okay, let's continue with the video. Ideally, this machine would be capable of winding coils with a diameter of 12 cm, but more on this later. Another neat feature is the use of the CNC controller gerbil. With this, the motion is nice and smooth and you can tune the motor separately. Also, the linear axis is backlash free with the use of two nuts which are preloaded with a spring. But enough of that, let's wind some coils. At the moment I don't have any coils that I need to wind, but if you flex enough to your friends that you got a new toy eventually, a coil will find its way into your mailbox. This one seems to come out of a gambling machine. After taking it apart, we are left with a plastic coil body. Designing a mandrel differs quite drastically and of course I had to design a complicated one. A threaded rod and two nuts should do the job just fine, but as a German I have a reputation to uphold. Alright, now that everything is ready, let the core winding begin. Also, make sure that the moving axis does not crash into things. Oh, that sweet failure. The initial alignment is quite critical, or you end up with something uneven like this. But, after a lot of testing and wasting way too much copper wire, I got a decent looking coil in the end. It still needs too much trial and error for my taste to get a good result. And there's definitely room for improvement, but it still works, draws approximately half of the expected current, but that's not my problem, my job was just to wind it. Let's move to something bigger. That future coil has a diameter of 70mm and I think of winding about 80cm on it and only a single layer. At the moment the spooling arm is not cut out for such big coils and is only in the way. For that I made another spooling arm so the full capacity of the machine can now be used. It, it did not went well. Too much tension. Too little tension and running backwards. Running out of wire. Needing to massage the wire into place. Running it so fast that the whole machine is shaking. Okay, I don't really know how tight that wire needs to be for a Tesla coil, but if the diameter gets any bigger, the motor will start out even easier. So that definitely needs some improvements. Now let's wrap it all up and come to a conclusion. The biggest problem, the motor which drives the coil. Not enough torque and needs some kind of reduction. I think a timing belt reduction would be a good idea. Also, the tensioning mechanism is pretty simple and at the wrong location at the moment. It really needs to be a dedicated system between the spool and the point where the wire leaves the spooling arm. Apart from those two points, the machine works quite nice and reliable. That's about all I have to say, so thank you for watching and in the next segment I will go over the procedure on how to measure the backlash in the linear axis for all those fools out there who wants to actually print this. So to measure the backlash in the linear axis, you need a dial indicator to measure the distance the axis is traveling. The first step is to jog it in one direction, zero it out, and then jog it in the opposite direction. Now the axis might not travel the exact set distance and that amount that is missing is the backlash. In this case, it may be one or two hundredths of a millimeter. As mentioned in the beginning, the linear axis is driven by two nuts which are spring loaded. Tension can be adjusted by tightening those two nuts. Also, the two bearings of the linear axis need to be preloaded. Those are only ball groove bearings, but only a little preload is required by pushing the back feet of the machine.